Hi there, and thanks for tuning in to Forensics 101. My name's Matt Cartledge. Um, I'm here to bring you some rich content on my brand new YouTube channel. This is my very first video, so please bear with me. I'm currently a forensic science student, studying a bachelor's degree in forensic science at the University of Hull here in my hometown in England. Um, my reason for starting up this channel was simply because um, before I started my degree, I was looking for rich content, some new content at least, like every week, you know, to just give me something fresh to look at, to watch, um, to educate me on the topic of forensic science, crime scene investigation, law, criminology, that kind of topic. And I couldn't find much um, within a day or two, I'd run out of content. So what I want to try and do is bring at least one video out every single week um, for the next three years on forensic science and crime scene investigation. Um, I'll take you in and around the campus um, while I'm there. Um, we'll look at some of the stuff that I'm studying. And, but most importantly, I want to do some home science experiments and demonstrations on, on the topic. So this first video, we're just going to look at something simple. Um, we're going to try and lift or, or at least visualize a latent fingerprint, latent being um, invisible to the naked eye. Um, so we're going to try and uh, visualize this latent fingerprint from a 22 caliber brass bullet shell casing. Um, we can do it with a, sim a couple of simple chemicals, but because we are using chemicals, I do recommend you don't do this at home. Um, this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. So without further ado, let's crack on and let's take a look at this first video. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the equipment that we're gonna need. We're gonna obviously for safety, um, I've got one or two pairs of uh, nitro gloves, um, some chemical splash goggles, um, always using chemicals, use goggles to protect your eyes. Um, we're going to need a graduated cylinder. This is 100 mils graduated. Uh, we have a 100 mil beaker and a 500 mil beaker. The 100 mil will be for uh, the chemicals and the 500 mil will be for distilled water. I have isopropyl alcohol. 50-50 uh, mix of water just to clean the shell casing. Um, we have some distilled white vinegar, 40 pence from Tesco, bargain. Hydrogen peroxide, it's currently 12% so I need to dilute that to 3% so it'll be 3 to 1 mixture with distilled water. Got some uh, cotton buds, uh, q-tips, um, stirring rod, some tweezers and uh, some towel. Um, clean up any spills uh, and then obviously we have the bullet shell casings they're, they're extremely small like 22 caliber I thought it was going to be a lot larger but they're not um, and then we're going to need something to magnify visual visualization so I have a couple of magnifiers as you can see um, to increase focus and magnification uh, and, th and then also for the end uh, just for the hell of it, um, I do have some samples of family members' fingerprints. Um, so, I mean, essentially that's what would happen. But first of all, let's clear the surface. We always like a nice, clean work surface. And we need to mix my solution of 3% hydrogen peroxide. So this is 12%. I do have a disposable pipette. And I'm just going to eyeball this about basically 10 mils so I'm going to put about 10 mils into a 100 mil beaker um, and then I'm going to follow that by 30 mils of distilled water giving me from 12% to a 3% solution um, if you don't have a graduate pipette um, you can always eyeball it just pour it into the beaker that's fine Okay, now we'll add the water. Again, this is distilled water. Um, you can use tap water for this, but tap water does contain minerals and dis dissolved solids and metals. So it could interfere with um, the reaction. So I've used distilled water. You can pick it up from a, a garage for like a pound for a, a litre or two. All right. We'll place that now in the graduated cylinder. And just pop that to a side for a moment. 
Now let's take the uh, shell casings. Now ideally I want to find the cleanest one possible for the demonstration. In reality, that's not going to happen. You know, shell casings, they're going to be full of dirt, full of muck. They might be full of oil, grease, residue of some sort. Not necessarily a fingerprint. So I found the cleanest one I can. Um, but just for the best result for this demonstration, I'm also going to clean it with a little bit of 50-50 um, mix of isopropyl alcohol and water. So just place it on some tissue there. And then uh, using a Q-tip, earbud, cotton bud, whatever you want to call it, I'll just spray it on the side and we'll just give it, give it a little wipe over. And that should take most of the residue. If you have household um, degreaser, um, you could use that. But I didn't have any available, so I just used what I had at hand, and that was my isopropyl alcohol. Um, but essentially, that should do the trick, remove as much dirt and grime as possible, so that it's, it becomes... Uh, and also, I like to do that, clean the inside, because um, you do get lots of dirt and residue um, inside them. I got these shell casings off Etsy, E-T-S-Y dot com. Um, very good for arts and crafts and things like that. Okay, so let's just uh, place a fingerprint. Now my hands was already in the nitrile gloves, so very sweaty. Should be a lot of residue on there. You know, if you, if you need more residue, run your fingers through your hair, across your forehead. You sweat a lot there. Lots of oils. Uh, should pick up a lot of residue and give a really good print. So now that I've got um, my finger mark onto the shell casing. Next thing I want to do is create my solution for it to sit in to um, basically expose the fingerprint. So the mixture we're looking for is the 3% hydrogen peroxide solution. We want 30 milliliters. And then of the distilled white vinegar, we want 21 milliliters. So essentially the total mixture should be 51 milliliters. At approximately three to two. Once we have that, we can then take the shell casing, and simply place it straight inside. Using the stirring rod, give it a little mix first. Make sure it's nicely stirred up. Now I, I use I use tweezers. You can use forceps. You can use a spatula to pick it up. Um, but yeah, I use the tweezers, place it inside. As soon as you let go, it grips and then just release the tweezers and it drops straight in. So now it's in the solution. Well, uh, to be honest, originally I was going to use these shotgun shells because it's got a larger surface area at the, um, the metal base. Um, but I tried that in a previous experiment and this is what I got. It was basically, it looked like aluminium or steel. So just to double check, I took my uh, golf hat, which has a magnet inside, and yep, there we go. Straight away, it, it magnetized towards the magnet, so at a guess, it's uh, steel. I'm presuming they, they coat them in some kind of brass or gold color um, for regal kind of look when you purchase them. Not that I purchased them, again, I purchased them from Etsy. So here's a closer look. It's um, probably been in the solution now for about two minutes. Uh, but what you'll find is you'll get a lot of air bubbles on the outside of the casing. And because you want the solution to come in contact with the shell casing as much as possible, you need to move it around. Uh, you can swell it with a stern rod. You can use the tweezers to shake it a little bit. But essentially you want as much contact with the solution on the brass casing as, as much as possible. Um, at this at, the, at this point, we're talking about three minutes at this point, and I took a look to see if there was anything being revealed. Uh, the fingerprint itself, I didn't see much. Um, after four minutes, this is what I got. Now, I can vaguely see some ridges there, so it's definitely becoming more apparent. Um, now, we're talking about six minutes now. So after six minutes... I'm confident we're going to have some sort of print. So using the Q-tip, the earbud, we're just going to place that inside the shell casing just to um, draw out the excess solution. 
um, because now we want to rinse it out. We want to get rid of the solution, stop any kind of reaction. And uh, there we go. There's the beaker of um, distilled water. We'll swill it around in there a little while. Um, get rid of all the excess solution. And then once we've done that, we take it out and then we need to inspect it. Um, but to inspect it, we're going to need to magnify it for sure. Because it's way too small to visualise with the naked eye. Um, if I come in a little bit closer here, you can just about see on the camera, you can just about see the difference. You can see the tarnish on the bare brass compared to where the fingerprint was made. Um, this is a better close up here. And you can definitely see the ridges. But the best thing to do now is to actually come in closer and take a photograph. So if we take this, if we take a photograph of this image here, and then I can actually edit this photograph in my mobile phone, quite simply, you know, exposure, brightness, hue. And I'm, I can't say with confidence if um, professional crime scene investigators, forensic scientists would use this kind of technique. But for me, during this demonstration, I found if I was to play around with this image, because there's no other way to lift this from the shell cartridge, you know. So there's the before and then changing the hue and the brightness. That's what you get after. So it's so much more vivid and so much more usable. And then that would be passed on to a fingerprint expert from the uh, forensic lab technician. And they would then be able to do their task of comparing and analysing the, the sample to a known fingerprint from a suspect or an unknown fingerprint. And please comment, like, subscribe and uh, look out for my next video. Thanks for watching.